everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Jessica Henry Gray, and I'm really excited to share today's episode with you. We are going to stray a little bit from plein air painting today, and we're going to work on a portrait. I missed working on portraits, and I know that a lot of you enjoy painting in portraits as well. So today, I'm going to break down the process of working from a photo into a painting. Um, but I hope that you follow along, and this is full of a ton of information in here that you're going to enjoy, and I hope that you will find it useful. Now, I also want to point out, stay to the end of this video. I have a short clip on my upcoming Zoom portrait workshop. I have um, spots still left in it. It's four days, and it is in November's. So there are links below, and you can follow those links to learn more information about my upcoming workshops. And join my newsletter because I'm going to have a lot more workshops next year, and I'm really excited about that. And there are a lot of other things exciting on the horizons. And I hope that you enjoy this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy it. And I love your comments and share. All right, so let's get going on this. All right, well, welcome everybody to my studio. Um, today I'm beginning this portrait on Belgian double oil primed linen. And I am beginning with a tone of burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and a little bit of blue. And then I'm just uh, with thinned down with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits, then I'm wiping it mostly off so it feels somewhat dry to the touch. So I have my image on the laptop and I folded the laptop in half so it's right next to where I'm working. And I wanted to thank Melissa Conrad Elswick for the use of her gorgeous photograph. Um, this was for an assignment that she was doing. This is Emma. Emma is a doctor, so beauty and brains, as <laughs> Melissa commented. Um, so I'm just really honored to use this photo for this painting. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video um, because I have such a lovely model. All right, so I begin with a very loose mixture of just a darker, you can take ultramarine blue, uh, a little burnt sienna, thinned down to an inky mixture. Holding my brush very loosely, I am putting the general idea of where she is on the canvas. Okay, so nothing is really committed in stone yet. I'm just giving her a sense of space. The What you don't paint is just as important as what you do. So the amount of background I allow around my figure is always very important that there's a sense of poetry, a sense of air circulating around her. I want to make sure that there is that vitality of space. Um, I don't want her too big so that she just fills the whole canvas. Okay, so getting it in place, um, I'm beginning by mapping out sort of the darker passages, the values, um, defining where the eye line is going to go and where the eye sockets will fit within that eye line. Now there's a lot of washed out light on her upper cheekbones and so that's a little bit difficult to define the shape of her orbital socket. So I'm using what I can. Um, in this case there's the top of the eye line. The shadow created on the side of her forehead as the light um, falls away and then um, the side of her cheek under her nose. Very soft passages of shadow. Um, now one thing I want to point out here in this video, when the camera is not directly in front of the canvas, whenever even photographing portraits, it can sort of um, distort the image. And that happens a little bit through the course of this because it's not right in front of the canvas. Um, but you get the idea of how to paint portraits, hopefully, from the video. All right, now I'm pulling out the lightest value. Next, I've isolated where the darker passages are going to go. And then with a little bit of thinner on the, my brush or paper towel, I'm rubbing out the lighter passages. Now I started with a middle, middle tone value 
over the whole canvas and so I don't have to worry about figuring out where I'm going to put that middle tone. All I have to do to uh, begin this picture is where are my darks and where are my lights. Even the the concentrating on getting the drawing accurate, I do that as I move forward from this point on. I'm thinking about the dark masses and getting it accurate as well. Um, so I'm kind of driving a couple of horses at the same time, if that makes sense. Again, just cleaned out brush and some turpentine. You don't see on camera how often I'm wiping my brush off. Every time my brush leaves the canvas, I'm wiping it on my paper towel because it can start to get paint in there and instead of subtracting it from what I'm working on, it's adding to it. So you can kind of start to feel after practicing and doing this uh, often enough when your brush is full and you need to wipe it. And sometimes when you want a nice cleaner, uh, almost down to the bare canvas, you use a paper towel. And you can um, adjust your pressure of how much you wipe away with your paper towel. I could dip my paper towel into the thinner also, but I, it's not necessary. Really, I'm just blocking in. When I want those light enough, I'll use paint, white paint. Uh, and then the shine on her hair was wonderful in its sense of creating a sense of direction and flow of light and design. So I'm using that to my advantage. And now that um, I feel that my masses are blocked in well enough, I'm taking a nice strong dark. And that's one of the things that drew me to this photograph to paint. Whenever you're choosing a picture to work from, you want to make sure that you see the three values um, because getting a likeness is derived from sculpting out the bone structure. You see more of the bone structure when you have a strong lighting. And I don't mean a front flash shot. I mean, like in this case, it's almost like a front overhead light creating a dramatic shadow for her hair in the side of her face. Um, of course, her looking over her shoulder like that is just really just attractive in every way. <clears throat> her neck has a nice recessed shadow effect that um, I liked getting as well. Um, the shadow on the side of her nose <clears throat> is very subtle, and but it's there and that's all we really need. It reminded me a little bit of the Vermeer's painting, A Girl with the Pearl Earring. And in that painting, the front of the girl's face is very kind of washed out and um, not a lot of variation in color and texture and for her face. So I wanted to sort of play with some of that in this painting as well. All right, so now I'm kind of cleaning up the drawing issues in and around the eyes and the nose. And I might take a little bit of dark for the background to reshape some of the um, contours of the face over there. I, likewise, I'll use some of the lights and push those into the dark just to get the overall flavor of the contours and the expression. In my other portrait videos and in some of my drawing courses, I teach students how to measure on a portrait to get accuracy and to find that one thing of truth at the beginning of the painting. In this demonstration, I, you won't see me measuring um, or dropping lines or any of that. I'm doing that mentally. So I look at her picture there and I'm making assessments um, given my background in drawing as I'm going along. And I want you to, I want to sort of project more of the idea of sculpting in this demonstration. Instead of measuring, you, I won't, I don't measure the eyes, I don't measure the distance down to the mouth as I have in other videos. Instead, thinking about it in terms of a block of clay <clears throat> and I'm working out the different planes and sculpting out that way. It's more important to me in this especially that I get that sculptural feeling. It was just so prevalent in the photo as well. Um, so there's so much to say about portrait painting. Trying to squeeze it into just an hour-long video on YouTube, it's almost impossible, but I will share what I can in the process of this painting and strongly encourage you to look at some of my uh, workshops. I have a, a Zoom workshop coming up here in November of 2020. Um, there's still spots available and it is a four-day workshop on a Monday and a Friday of the week, two weeks, and I'm just really looking forward to it. We're going to talk about the finer points of working from photos and again, like this, how to take it apart, how to get a likeness, 
how to think in terms of planes, masses, values, sculpting, and later in this video I will be getting more into mixing color and handling edges, directing the eye, and um, how we go about finding those elements that are going to make your portrait really work and hold together. What is it that's most important in the telling of the story? In this case, when I saw this photo by Melissa, it just struck me as just this intrepid expression on this um, beautiful young woman. And I mean, her expression could be read in, in multiple different ways. Um, you know, is she, what, what is her attitude? What are her thoughts? And I wanted to capture that mystery in this painting. So her eyes are bright, they look intelligent, and that, that was really my intention in, you know, people say, well, you have to have a concept. I've always said, you need to have a concept. What is your concept for this painting? What is it you really want to tell the world about this? And for me, it was that expression. It was just so priceless. And so even though I'm focusing on color mixing and edges and all of those elements have to be there in working out a painting, but overall, if you don't have a story, then you don't have a painting. And I don't mean a narrative. I mean, what is it that you cared about? Did what you care about come across in the final result of the painting? If it's not there, you're not done. Keep working at it. Um, that's how you know when you're finished with a painting, by the way, is did you arrive at that one thing that was important that you had to say? So I spent a little bit of extra time working on her eyes. Um, and to capture that expression as well, uh, the angle of her mouth and the tilt of her head was all important um, in, all, in capturing all of that. I don't want any lines around her eyes to be super sharp and strong. Even though we can look at the painting or the photo and concentrate on it and everything becomes a sharp, crisp edge, I have to look at just her eyes and um, kind of loosely at that and see where the edges feel soft. The eyes, the um, eyelash ridge on top, that can appear very sharp and strong. Even the iris in the eye. At first I paint it dark because I'm trying to uh, just get the right shape. Later I come back through and I soften that edge because it, it almost creates a feeling of glassiness of an eyeball when you create that soft edged look on an eye. Uh, no sharp edges on the eye. Same thing with painting makeup. Um, she's obviously got makeup on. And if you, if I were to paint the eyeliner on the lower lash line as sharp and as crisp as I saw it, it would look painted on and illustrated. So everything to the face has to be painted softly and it will create the desired effect. Same thing with lips. They can appear strong. Um, lipstick can look almost outlined. Don't paint it that way though. You have to keep everything soft or it'll just look like a doll, like a mannequin. <laughs> um, so just just note that. Working on the hair a little bit, blocking in some of the ochre, sienna value undertones. Obviously I'll paint over that um, scumbling there, but just to give myself a sense of direction as I'm moving forward in blocking out the values and masses of her face. Even in the course of working on the values for this initial laying in, um, I'm thinking about the topography of a face. So topography is a term we use in referencing maps. It shows us the hills and valleys and um, canyons and mountains. Faces are the same thing. If you think about the face as having hills and valleys and so forth, it gives you a better sense of what is near and what is far. Um, so when I'm working on her cheekbones, the zygomatic uh, cheekbones that are receiving most of the light, they're going to be receiving the most intense light. And so I'm creating the, uh, that um, illusion of sculpture by making those the most intense. At this point in scumbling in, laying in the foundation, I'm just laying in that little bit of color for her lips. They're not accurate. They're just a sort of a color mass. Um, and then as I'm contouring out the background, working on her face and that edge, I'm just laying in a little bit darker blue with some yellow ochre into that to create um, some confines with which I can work, um, as you can see here, this contour. The edges are not finished, but I'm mentally already thinking about what edges are going to need to be softened. To create the feeling of roundness in anything, you have to soften an edge. 
Where there is a sharp edge is where bone is closest to the skin. So where that zygomatic bone, her cheekbone, um, bends right above her cheek, um, there may be a little bit sharper accent there. Um, the nose, where the bridge of the nose um, protrudes and then cartilage, it breaks and cartilage goes downwards, that breaking point is going to be a sharper edge. Um, so those places along the face where you see um, a change <clears throat> in the plane, you have a little bit more clarity and a sharper edge. Right there where the um, the bridge of the nose cuts across the eye, that can be a sharper edge because that then is creating the illusion of the nose bone is in front of the soft eye. So sharper edge pushes away softer things. Um, so now as I'm moving through here, again, I'm just taking mental measurements and measure um, different angles and sort of with my eyes and working out those challenges. Um, I mixed up a little bit of white and yellow ochre to cre create some of that skin tone. I really just needed to have a lighter value <clears throat> on her cheekbones to, so I can kind of see a general structure of where I'm going with that passage. All right, now working out the contours of her chin, I'm looking at just the highlights around the mouth and the chin. Um, they're a little bit more intense at this point in the beginning. I will push the surrounding values that provide a little bit more contouring as I go along here. Uh, this passage under the nose where the teeth come out, if you imagine um, the canine teeth under the, the chin, or under the lip there, they protrude out from the face. So I Try to push that highlight a little bit more. All right, now I'm working on some of the more of the background color. It's it's one of those passages where you have to work a little bit on the background in order to work on the foreground. So I'm working on losing edges and softening things, and in, to do that, I have to have some of the background color in place. And so that is um, a little bit of my intention here as I get some of the background done. I'm also trying to define the passages where I have the darkest value in the background and the passage of her head um, back there where it's shadowed really just disappears into the shadow in that upper corner and I love that sense of mystery and intrigue where not everything is clearly defined and explained. So I'm totally losing the back of her head but I'm defining it with a little bit of atmosphere behind her neck. So. That front passage in front of her face, I'm incorporating a little bit more yellow ochre and white into that blue-green mixture. 
and I'm putting some behind her head to make it feel like there's air going around her head. Um, so just this passage is just more of that where I'm creating a sense of atmosphere in the background. The background will get a lot more care and attention, but at this point I'm softening my brush strokes so that they are not a distraction. Just taking a soft bristle brush and going um, upwards and sideways just to get rid of my um, scratchy brush marks. All right, now coming back through with just some dark paint, um, burnt sienna and some ultramarine blue, I'm clearly defining exactly where I want the eyes now, um, making sure that that top lash line and the iris are both in the correct places. When I had original, originally laid in this picture, I felt that this eye closest to us was just a teeny bit too high, so I lowered it a little bit by um, just scrubbing out the top part of the eye and bringing the iris down a little more. All right, now I'm putting in some of the white of the eye. Now, obviously, it's not going to stay this white, uh, but what I loved about the picture, and I don't normally paint um, people with whites of their eyes quite so white as they show up in the photo and I don't want to paint them that way. Um, when working on a portrait and even just in your regular day-to-day -day observation of people, notice the color of the whites of of our eyes. They are really more of a gray. Um, you can see some pinkish, sort of some maybe some touch of yellow. Everybody's is a little bit different. Uh, her eyes here, I start out with just a basic white, um, just so that I can help clearly define the shape of my iris in the eye. I'll come back through here and tone them down with a little gray. Eyelashes create a shadow on the eyeball, so make sure that you develop the shadow that is created by that lash line, and then where the eyeball itself tucks into the sides of the eye socket, they are darker as they recede back into the tear cavity and the um, outside corner as well. So those are passages too on the eye where you're going to want to make sure to darken. Right now I'm just taking a small brush, really tiny brush, and, and that's what I'm focusing on is softening some of those stark, sharp <laughs> eyes that were really, they would really bother me as I um, proceed into the painting just having these sharp lines looking at me. Um, all right, so Again, just taking a little bit more yellow ochre and um, some white, a little, um, little bit of more cadmium red light onto my palette. Um, just making a little bit of a skin color, hair color, trying to create that orange glow. Um, I'm sure that there were other tubes of paint that I could have put on my palette, but I try to keep my colors limited when working on anything, only adding what I need as I need it um, beyond my primary colors that I always use. Um, so a little bit of cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and I'm off and running. All right, so I'm mixing up just a little bit of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, a little yellow ochre, creating the rest of the hair color. Um, and by doing this also, I am um, sort of navigating the contours of the rest of her head. Tops of heads, craniums can be a little bit um, disconcerting for some because one thing that I think most people don't realize is how much cranium we have and the shape of a skull underneath the hair. Um, and, and in this picture, it's really difficult to see because her head, it slips into shadow, but it's important that it's there. Um, so I'm suggesting a brown and then um, it'll just, it's almost the same value as what the color in the background is going to be with the exception of I've added a little more burnt sienna into her hair as opposed to the background is more greenish tone. And I love a greenish background, especially when painting skin, it brings out the red tones being its complement to that. And so it's a very nice, very nice color for backgrounds in any portraiture, any race, it doesn't matter, just beautiful with, with any human. 
And so that's just mostly what I'm using here. Uh, ultramarine blue, little yellow ochre. There's some sienna in there to tone it down and also in passages to darken it. So at this point now I'm just cleaning up around the face and pulling in more background. And the shadows that are on her back are, have more to do with anatomical features, her scapula and um, trapezius muscles as they contour down her back. So I'll get into a little bit of that um, as I paint that passage a little more. Working now to develop her skin tone. Her skin tone is, it's like I said, it's very washed out. Um, yellow ochre and some white, a little bit of cadmium yellow. I love this intense light on her face and so I try to pull in just a little bit more color than what I was seeing in the photo. Um, it's just a little bit more of that pinky rosy tone and um, creates that nice dramatic effect. And I'm also allowing my brush strokes to define the contours and texture of her face. So her cheek, where it breaks there and then slips down into shadow, I'm using um, a brush stroke that defines that form. Um, same with the other side where it slips off into shadow. Right now, that contoured edge over there looks saw, or it looks hard. I come back through and I soften that. Um, working on the side of the nose, the nose as it protrudes out from the face has more blood at the tip of the nose. So I add a little bit more red at the tip. It gives that, that illusion of it coming out at us. So I wanted to do a side by side here now as I work on some more of these subtle features of um, the contours around her eyes. And in that passage, there's a nice shadow there, which is very cool. Um, there is a little bit more blue into the sienna mixture. Um, just trying to shape the bridge of her nose as it comes down to the shadow on, on her eye in there. Um, and I'm pulling out a little bit of the highlights as well as um, the, her cheeks are bounced, the light is bounced up into the orbital cavity, um, just giving it a little bit more dimension and sculpturalness up there. Now this passage here where her hair is creating a shadow, that whole passage to me was just a little bit too intensely warm. So I, I wanted to keep that glow, but I tone it down a little bit by putting more cool tones um, into the shadow. That passage there um, where her zygomatic bone, cheekbone turns and goes under to her jaw, I created a, that to have a little bit cooler tone and under her neck incorporating more of that background color into the neck passage because that will unite it more with the background than with the foreground. So when you can incorporate background cooler tones into the face where it recedes, you will create that sense of depth and sculpturalness. Um, and here where the plane of her jaw turns and goes under her mouth, um, you can see on the top, it's light, and then down where the flesh turns and goes under, it just, it, it goes into shadow. However, it's picking up a bounced light from her shoulder. So trying to create that illusion again of that sense of glow from her skin um, is just that passage in there. Here where I'm working on her shoulder, um, I wanted to create that uh, illusion of flesh as it turns. The colors you can see I'm using for flesh tones are very simple. It's just a varying shades of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a little bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit where I want it to be cooler, a little bit of cadmium red light where I want it to be warmer. So look in the shadows, look in the um, turning points where the flesh turns and goes into the background. It tends to have sort of that fleshy warmth um, but in the shadows where it slips, it will go into a cooler tone. Um, so here, right where the light is hitting it most intense on her shoulder, right as it turns away from there, there's almost a cool pinky tone that I wanted to pull out a little bit more than what I saw in the photo. So that's what I'm working on in this passage. So then I would add a little bit more alizarin into that with some white to create it just a subtly pinkish tone. You don't want to paint something that is all warm or all cool. It won't have a sense of reality. And I know I've been talking a lot about that in the plein air videos lately, but 
The same is true with um, portraits. And we'll get into it with still lifes as well as we paint more of those. Uh, that sense of balance of cool and warm, movement of light. Look at how this light moves up her shoulder and slips away into shadow. There's poetry in that movement. And I think that we sense it in life, but as an artist, it's your job to find it and capture that fleeting sense of beauty and light movement. Um, so again here, where the, the bone of the shoulder hits its most intense light, and then it slips back into shadow where her hair falls on the side of her face, right over her trapezius and under her neck, um, gives it that beautiful feminine contour that I'm just really gonna try to maximize here. And then there's a shadow from that chunk of hair as it drapes over her shoulder and into the background. Uh, love that, so I'm playing with that a little bit in here. Okay, so I'm working now just on the contours around her chin. Um, be careful when you're working on chins not to make the shadow under the lip, the lower lip, too dark. And with anything, we can observe things and they can become too observed <laughs> and we make them too dark or too much of an object. Uh, so just look at the whole thing as a whole. Same thing with working on her lips. It's easy to look at the photo and see that they're clearly well-defined but I had to look at her eyes while painting or observing her lips. Obviously I'm watching what I'm doing while I'm painting, but you look at something else when you're observing and see how actually they're not as defined as we think. Um, so I'm putting in a, just a little bit of the highlights. It's, you have to, when you're painting something like the lips or the nose, you have to paint the skin in the surrounding area at the same time because that skin is as much a part of the lips and the contours as anything else. Underneath that lip is we have canines and teeth, canine teeth and, and that form a plane turning. Uh, so we have the passage under the nose and then it turns and goes down the side of the teeth and the mouth, the mandible towards the back. So just try to observe those passages on your photo. If you can either work from life or from your photo, if you have a photo this beautiful <laughs> to work from, look at those little nuances and where the lips tuck and turn into each other. Um, and here now I'm working on the passage where the face turns into the background. Where can I lose and soften edges? And I'm just using a small, cheap little brush to get that effect. Uh, okay, now the highlight down the bridge of the nose, a nice, cool highlight. I'm looking to see where it first starts at the beginning in, in between the two eyes. And then as it projects down the nose, it softens in intensity because it spreads out a little. And right into that red, I don't want to lose all my red on the end of her nose. Um, so just kind of uniting the background into the nose a little bit in one part, it just appeared to completely get lost. Um, so again, working on the canine teeth on that side, under the, um, under the mouth there.
we have a tendency to overcomplicate things. Um, we know how noses are formed, but when you squint down at that photo of her, they it's very simple under her nose. Um, it's really just a series of uh, abstract contoured shadow and the shape of it. And so trying not to make those shadow accents too dark. And um, only in the passage where I see directly under each nostril is it darker. Um, the rest of it is just one simple solid shadow piece and the side of her nose that has the nostril flare is just a slight bit lighter. Um, so now under her eye and the bridge of her nose I still had the same intense light. So I'm working on some of that at that time um, here now just cleaning it up and that's basically what I'm working from this point on. The painting gets to a place where it's really just a matter of refining the sculpture and happy with the drawing of it, I can now go through and push some of the colors and values a little bit more to clearly explain what I'm working on. So as this flesh comes around the mouth and the muzzle, I want to make sure that that's exactly right. And where that zygomatic bone turns under the eye socket there and goes back, that's important that that had a soft contour there. Where the, the um, bounced light from her shoulder is bouncing up into her jawline was important that that had that glow on it. So just softening some of these contours in the background in this passage. So as I'm working on her hair a little bit here, um, the, the passage that went up and above was warmer, but where it turned, that shine turned and went down into shadow, there was a cool gray um, shine. And so I wanted to put that gray in there. And I softened that with, um, this is a synthetic brush and I like these because they're very soft, um, but they still hold a firm chiseled edge. So I'm coming back through here now and putting that cool tone, and I'll even take my finger here pretty soon, just to soften um, those passages where the hair slips down into shadow, um, because I didn't want a stark, strong line. Uh, and then that little um, bun on the top of her head had some shines hitting it, but I didn't want, I come back through and I soften those because I didn't want them to be too distracting drawing the eye up there. Um, so working on her chin now and you can see in the course of painting a portrait it, I find it important to jump around I don't just work on something until it's done I will jump around in a passage until I'm comfortable and then I'll move to another area where I'm comfortable not finished but I'll come back to it because by doing that process you see the whole thing um, in, a, in its unified context and that's very important to see it all as a whole not that it's all done all at the same time, but you just kind of tighten the whole thing up uh, universally. So here where I'm just finishing up the nose, I'm just taking a sharper chiseled edge to define the shadow underneath the ball of the nose and the nostrils where they create a shadow. 
Um, and here's a picture of the finished nose, um, just to show you what that ended up looking like straight on. And now I'm going to just kind of work on cleaning up the passage around the mouth and defining some of these shapes a little bit more clearly and softening various edges where the lips need to, um, to have that illusion of being soft. All right, so I'm working on the passage of the hair where I just want some intense color to peek through. Um, I don't want it to be overwhelming, but we need to, I'm still trying to push the envelope on how far I can take the color in her hair without it being distracting. Um, now her, the cheek has that passage where I just wanted that more cadmium red light in her cheekbone where the flesh is hitting it. It's closest to the surface. There's more blood in that passage. Um, giving her that just that wonderful youthful look um, so sometimes you never know how far you can take something till you push it too far then you can bring it back but if you don't go far enough you never go far enough it, it, it just uh, there's it always falls short so go too far and then you can scale it back if it's too much so just softening these um, areas in here to create a little bit more of a uh, gentle brushwork I didn't want a choppy sort of brushwork on her face, but rather brushwork that explained and defined the form. And so um, just keeping those a little bit more muted. Uh, again, working now around her mouth to finish it, um, pulling in some highlights, that lower lip as it comes forward. The skin right on the corners of the mouth has a little bit of a highlight. Um, so just pull, playing with some of that on both sides. And then on top of it, it just curls and goes away into shadow. So just watch and observe where those tucks and folds are on a mouth. It's absolutely marvelous. I love painting lips and mouths for all of those little subtle contours. Um, now the chin, of course, uh, just the shadow and the softness underneath. Just working on <clears throat> creating that sense of illusion of roundness. All right, now working on her eyes, um, just cleaning up this passage too, where the I want the eyelashes to create more of that cast shadow on the eyeball itself. A um, little bit of gray, cleaning the folds in her, the creases in her eye, eyes uh, themselves. A um, little bit of eyebrow up there.
So there was a shadow underneath that lower lash line created by the contour of the lower lid. Um, I, it's often forgotten about, <laughs> but there, there is that lower lid does cast a shadow depending on the angle of the light. And so I like to put that in when I can, when I see it. Um, so softening the edges of the iris as it touches the whites of the eye, you know, that's what I'm working on at that moment, I had to redo that shine in the eye. When you're putting shines in eyes, pick an eye that's going to be receive the more intense light. You don't want them both to be equal. Um, the one closest to us, I wanted that shine to be a little bit more intense, the one behind a little less. Um, whatever photo you work from may have both of them being equally uh, brilliant and bright, but you have to decide uh, which one is going to, um, usually it's the one closest to us, has the most intense light on it. So, and here is a passage where I um, have finished the eyes. You can see them up close. Um, I, that last little flick of the hair as it covered the eye was, was important to me that it was in there. Now I'm just taking the same small brush that I was using and cleaning up some of the passages of the hair where I want just a few chunks to have a little bit more attention using my finger to soften those. I had mentioned that earlier. I like that effect of using the finger. You don't want to use it too much, but a little bit just to um, really gloss an edge on something has a neat effect. Creating um, a little bit more delicate contouring to her neck. Um, I felt it was too um, just straight up and down angular. I liked seeing some of the more of those curves and contours in that. So I'm putting in her earring. Um, it really was just represented by a dark, um, I don't know, oval or something with some little diamond studs around it. it. It didn't really matter about the detail, just a subtle suggestion that there is an earring there connected to her ear. Um, just wanted to clean up the appearance of her ear just a little bit, soften it so it wasn't distracting. Ears. Consider the ears as part of the background. They're part of the side of the head. While we need them, they, you don't want them to really draw a lot of attention. All right, so now I'm just taking and finishing up the lips, um, just working on where I see the light hitting it most intense um, and the shine as it went across. Uh, on here, you don't really see me wiping my brush off very often, but it was important that I pay attention where the edges are softest and I wiped my brush off during those uh, passages that I'm working on. For example, there where the side of the mouth connects with the skin on the side of the chin there. Very soft edge where the lower lip curls under and has that little pouty thing. You can put a little bit sharper edge. 
top lip there where it tucks into the cheek. You want a little sharper edge. Um, the cupid's bow right in the center. You can get a little teeny bit of definition, but overall keep your edges soft. And here's a close up of the lips as I finished them. You can see some of the passages that were sharp and some that are soft and where there's a cast shadow. Um, now, just developing the chin around the mouth and to create that illusion of it all has to be connected. Um, there's a cast shadow under the lip and then um, uniting the chin to the background as the chin is connected to the neck and the neck is part of the background. So it all has to have that sense of unity and working together. So the finishing touches on the hair, I'm coming up through here and some of my brush strokes were a little distracting so I just wanted to calm them down a little bit and my finger worked great for that. Um, and I will show you here a close up of the hair as I have that part finished. I like the loose feeling, it doesn't have to be super polished, it's not about painting every hair, it's simply hair is a mass, it's a, a mass sitting on top of the skull and so I try to think about it defining the form of the skull. Now her um, shirt or dress top, uh, I, it had to be in the picture. It's just created such a, an interesting contour to that lower portion of the canvas that I felt was important. Um, so coming up, I, I jump around. So I saw a passage where I needed a little bit darker value um, behind her neck and um, just dropping that background trapezius muscle behind her neck. All right, coming back through and putting in the um, the black dress. Um, now here it looks like a cardboard cutout, but I take a dry clean brush or just wipe my brush off and I go right along that edge and I soften it so it looks like it's connected actually to flesh and not just construction paper cut out and held up to her. Um, and I'm taking now the background here, finishing some of this background. It's important that I work on it at the same time because I wanted to take my brush here, as you can see, and soften the contour of her shoulder. And a passage here, um, I'll show you a close up. Softening that makes it look like it recedes and goes into the background. And on the top where the clavicle connects with the shoulder socket, right there on the top of the image, I flick the brush off to show that anatomical clavicle creating that difference in that um, shoulder. Just a little bit of anatomy there. You can play with losing an edge to create that effect. All right, now finishing some of the background here. Um, I laid it down and now I want a little bit more punch to that atmosphere. So a little bit yellow ochre, a little white in with that greenish, greenish mixture. And I'm doing a sort of a cross hatching brush stroke. I'll come back through and soften it a little. I don't want it to be really distracting, but I like that it gives sort of a sense of um, powerful light hitting that background. Now, if you guys are enjoying this portrait video, um, as you can tell, I'm talking fast. There's a lot to say. Uh, if you're interested, take the workshop. And I also sell a, a portrait video um, that we've offered through Renaissance Creative Arts. Uh, but yeah, uh, contact me if you're interested in more information on um, the workshop. Okay, well that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed this and will take away a lot of information that you can use. Sometimes if you even just get a couple little nuggets, that's all you need. 
All right, you guys, so, so stay tuned to the end here. I've got a little clip on my upcoming workshops and be sure to check out the portrait workshop um, spot still available in that. And be sure also to check out the link on commissions. If you're interested in having me do a commission now until December 1st, there's a special price. Order then to get it by the Christmas and the holidays. All right, you guys, see you next week. Thanks so much. I'm Jessica Henry Gray and I just wanted to come on here to tell you about my upcoming four workshops but today I have the special announcement so I want to talk to you about these four upcoming workshops I have for this year 2020 now these workshops are specially designed for you guys in mind in this time in history that we are in um, so my first one I want to tell you about it takes place in Oregon now, this is going to be an in-person workshop, but we are going to take every measure to protect each other, and we'll be wearing masks when it's appropriate, keep our distance at six feet, and so forth that way. Um, also, if it rains, we will be canceling, and I will give you a full refund, um, unless we're able to do one day and not the next, and it's a 50% refund. But the reason that I am doing that is because I'm not going to retain an indoor facility so that we are we don't have that situation where we're all together. So we will be on the beach painting in Oregon in Cannon Beach, one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Um, so I'm really excited about that one, and it is starting to fill. There's only 10 allowed in that in-person workshop. So go ahead and follow the links and take advantage of this. It's a really special offer at only $200 per person. That's a great deal for two days. And um, uh, this really kind of is designed for people who maybe have never had the opportunity to get out and paint, or they love the idea of plein air painting, and they just really haven't yet. Uh, for only two days, it's a great opportunity to not get overwhelmed. So the next workshop I want to tell you about is here in Ohio. Um, we are going to be painting at the Kingwood Garden Center. It's a mansion, actually, on this beautiful um, the grounds. There are manicured gardens, hedges, rose bushes, fountains, and, and all of that. Um, so I'm excited to have that workshop there. Again, only 10 allowed. This is an in-person workshop. Um, and we will, again, be following all the same protective measures. And um, so go ahead, follow that link down below, and it will give you a lot more information on that as well. And that, of course, is all plein air. So the next two workshops I want to tell you about are my Zoom workshops. They're completely online, only 12 allowed in each workshop. The first one I want to tell you about is landscape painting. So we're going to do this four day workshop in the studio completely. The purpose of this workshop is to prepare you for plein air painting. We won't obviously be going out plein air painting, but it will be indoors and it will be with the mindset that eventually you would like to learn how to go do plein air painting. So I will be talking about how to be efficient and how to um, Think of composition, values, and your colors and mixing. And so we will just attack all those different aspects of plein air painting and break down the process that you need. So in four separate classes, I will be taking different issues. You're going to do a new painting per class. And half the class, it's a four-hour session, half the class I'll be doing a demo and talking, and then the other half, you will take your painting and I will be able to watch what you're doing and I will offer critiques throughout the remaining two hours. All right, so now the next one that I wanna tell you about is the portrait online Zoom class. So in this one also will be four sessions <clears throat> and I will be taking you through the process of developing a portrait, creating likeness and arriving at accuracy and then also adding personality and life to the, your portraits. How to do that, how Rembrandt did that. We'll be looking at how quickly how to paint eyes, nose, mouths, just a real simple approach to that. Then you will be working step by step along with what I'm doing. And I think in this process, it's, it's a nice way for you to jump into portraiture. 
last two classes, you will take your own photo and I will continue working on another painting and show you how to do a completely different painting from the first one. Hairs, nose, you know, we'll, we'll get all the other features in. During the whole process, I'll be able to critique yours as well. So you're gonna get that in the online course. So follow the links below for more information on these. so much for listening and have a wonderful week and I will see you tomorrow when I put my new video up. Okay, bye-bye.